Buongiorno. Benvenuti. Welcome you all in Catania. It's really a pleasure having you all here for this uh, General Assembly of UNIS. And uh, to start, let me immediately give the microphone to the Deputy Mayor of the City of Catania that is hosting us, Professor Paolo La Greca. Benvenuti tutti nella città di Catania a nome del sindaco, l'avvocato Enzo Trentino. Welcome to everyone in Catania. And I am greeting you on behalf of our major, Enzo Enrico Trentino. But unfortunately today he couldn't be with us for a previous uh, meeting that could not change. But I have to say that I'm really particularly grateful to Trentino to give me this golden opportunity to be here and to welcome you in our city, for I belong, first of all, to the University of Catania, so I am a teacher, a professor of this university, and the heart is always beating for my university. And to have you here in this room and everywhere you are uh, looking and working with us today, it's really a great opportunity. I think this uh, European uh, program, it's quite important, I think it's really of utmost importance, let me say, for to have the opportunity to exchange our different experience to, in a way to make our brain in touch with other people, learning, working together, studying. It's really the greatest thing we can imagine in order to improve our capacity First of all, to be really European citizens, but also to become part of a wider community. And in this respect, I think that uh, um, the participation of the uh, municipality of Catania as uh, a partner, in a way, uh, of, the, of the project, it's just uh, um, a way to testify how for us it re is really important to have and to increase the opportunity for all our students to find a job, but on the other way, to have the opportunity to exchange with other people. Myself, uh, during my life, I was abroad from uh, my uh, city. I worked in many different places, but in the end, I had the possibility to be back and to work here. This is what really we should make as our great effort to allow all our students all over Europe to move, to exchange, but then to have the opportunity, real opportunity of work, study, live, wellness, enjoy wherever they want. So thank you very much for your presence here and really enjoy our city. Thank you, thank you to Professor La Greca and, uh, well, Deputy Mayor, Rectors, Presidents, Vice-Chancellors, Representative of the European Commission, ladies and gentlemen, friends, students. It is for me a great uh, honor and a great pleasure to open this General Assembly of the UNIS. In this historical palace that you uh, are actually looking at, and in this historical university, the Sicilia Studium Generale, the oldest university in Sicily, founded in 1434 by Alfonso d'Aragona. As all you know, as all we know, this is the uh, final meeting of uh, the first phase of UNIS, 
after three, three years. And uh, UNESIS uh, was one of the 41 European University Alliances. And they will soon be 60 alliances in uh, 2024, strongly wanted by the European Commission. And we worked together these three years, really thanks to our coordinator, the uh, uh, Poznan, uh, for, the, for the hard work of coordination that uh, has, been, has been done and that uh, gathered us together in these three difficult years. Because we started, I remember to myself and to all of you, we started in 2020 in the middle of the pandemics. So it was not, not easy, it was, was tough. And uh, we started the, knowing each other only in video, and then finally we started meeting and, uh, and looking at each other and, uh, and really uh, uh, interacting. So this uh, is the final meeting uh, after three years of an ambition, ambitious uh, challenge. We were seven universities from seven different countries. But in some way, as all we know, this is the start of a new challenge. Three new countries, three new universities joined. We are now 10, and we have the opportunity to continue and to start again, and to gather together again. So this, indeed, is a new alliance. It's a, a new starting. And uh, talking to the youngest that I see there, well, this is, uh, in some way, an enormous opportunity. Because this, the name says, is a European university. It's a university that goes from the very far west of Europe, Portugal, to Poland, and then to the very far north, uh, uh, Sweden and Finland, to Sicily and Greece. So uh, it's really taking all around Europe, from the west to the east, from the north to south, gathering us all together. And, uh, well, sometimes we call it a project. Other times we call it a consortium. We did also the, uh, uh, really a strong gathering with the ASBL, so from the legal entity led by Mons. And, uh, and this tells us one thing, that we are not a project, we are not a consortium. We are really, in some way, a dream. We are a dream of a single European university with 150,000 students, with 15,000 professors all together, and with the possibility for you, the youngest, to go around, to go around, to pick up courses around Europe and go around Europe and uh, take advantage of this. And this is really our second phase. We should do that. We should make this dream true in this way. So to, uh, 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 to conclude, first let me actually thank, I cited Poznan, but I need to cite Pavel Zniatala that uh, uh, really uh, uh, coordinated us uh, from Poznan University of Technology. I need uh, to thank uh, Ivona Jablonska uh, that is following us uh, 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 from the European Commission. And uh, of course, uh, I need to thank all those that uh, worked hard to make this meeting in Catania possible. I'd like to work the whole team, but particularly Cristina Satriano and uh, Lucia Zappala. And I take this occasion to send her 
our deepest and most sincere condolences for the loss of her father yesterday night. To conclude, let me thank you again for coming from all different parts uh, of, of Europe. And uh, uh, I would like to let you know better our university with a one minute video that shows the different places of uh, our university. But let me finish reminding the youngest that really this is a great opportunity and Eunice is for you. Thank you. It is for me now a great pleasure to call one by one the rectors uh, to give their uh, uh, address. And uh, it is my pleasure to call first the project leader and coordinator uh, uh, from Poznan University of Technology in Poland, which is one of the five top technical universities in Poland with very strong industrial cooperation. So it is my pleasure to uh, uh, introduce and ask to, this, to come to the stage to the Rector Teofil Jesonowski. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished Rector, this magnificus uh, Francesco Priolo, Distinguished representative of the city Catania, representative of the European Commission, they are friends, rectors of the nine universities, distinguished colleagues, friends, and they are students. I'm really honored to be here, and it's, I'm really proud that we can share our friendship due to Eunice University. Firstly, I would like to admire Many thanks to the Francesco Priolo and uh, his uh, wonderful team for the hosting us, for the wonderful preparation of yesterday, today's and tomorrow meeting. So we really appreciated your efforts. And of course, let me mention about uh, our friends, Lucia, that hope that she accept our condolence. Thank you to Christina and Lucia, and of course, to all team of Catania University. Let me also admire the history of this university, which is extremely beautiful. And of course, uh, I would like to emphasize nowadays impact that Catania University, let me say, plays for the development of European Union for our globe. And of course, I'm really proud that the UNIS is one of the best European university. We are in progress, of course. We really develop our education system, internships, and also nowadays we are working with development of research and finally, of course, transfer to their, let me say, knowledge to the market society. The University of Eunice, and nowadays Eunice for you, it's not for us, but it is for the student and for new generation 
not only as the impact of education, but generally as the impact of uh, culture, future, and of course for the safeness of our globe due to climate change, due to uh, issues related with digitalization, due to transformation of knowledge, due to future that we will stay mostly safety, close to the Ukraine, close to the other dangerous situation, and of course, healthness, which is very, very important, but the most important is education. When we will well educated, we're for sure safe and of course, more healthy. And uh, finally, please accept my gratitude for all of you that continue the unis for you, that is future, not only for 10 university, but the future for all of us. Thank you once again, Francesco. Thank you to all of you that we are part of this brilliant family, university family. Thank you. And uh, now is the turn of uh, Brandenburg University of Technology in the northeast of Germany. It's a university focused on uh, technology and uh, with uh, a particular emphasis on energy, materials, information and communication technology, health, with uh, uh, more than 40% of the students foreigner coming from over 100 countries. And uh, the university is today represented by the vice president, Mikhail Ibna. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for this kind introduction. Um, but I must admit that I'm very honored uh, to be here and to stand here on behalf of President Gesine Grande. Um, and uh, please allow me to send you her regards. Uh, and she cannot be here at the moment because she is on holiday. And you know where she is at the moment? She is in Italy for holiday. <laughs> So maybe when we shout out loud, she can hear it maybe, so yeah. <laughs> let's see. Thank you very much. Um, thanks, very, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, we have been here for, let's say, half an hour, 45 minutes or something. Thanks a lot for this great hospitality, what you bring for us. Thanks a lot for this opportunity to have uh, the meeting this uh, two, two days, three days uh, uh, with you. I'm very honored uh, to stand here to represent our university because um, this strong, let's say, consortium which we brought out in the recent three years, um, which brought up such a, let's say, a spirit. Did I? Oh, yeah. Uh, which brought up su such a big spirit and, and uh, things what we have done together in research, in education, and uh, things what we have done for students, for researchers, and so on. And now we have the chance to go into the next phase, Unis for You, where we can bring up more things together. And um, I think that this is exactly the right spirit what we should do for developing ideas and opportunities for young people, for young researchers, for, for students to um, admire uh, the spirit of, the, of, of, of Europe. Um, as we all know, at the moment, um, complete Europe is, let's say, in a situation where we need strength, where we need to stand together, and where we need to be one union, and uh, especially Unis and Unis for You is something which brings up the puzzle piece exactly in that direction what we need for the future. Thanks for that and thanks for everything what we will do in the future together. Thank you. It is uh, now the turn of the University of Cantabria in Santander, north of uh, Spain and uh, it's a university with a very large international uh, uh, projection, and uh, very recently we all together celebrated in Santander the 50 years of this uh, uh, young but very strong and important university. So it is my pleasure to call the rector 
Angel Pazos. Well, good morning to, to everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, recognize and to thank uh, the very nice and the fantastic organization of the University of Catania of all this meeting. Uh, yesterday, uh, we have a fantastic visit to, the, to your current uh, Department of Humanities, this fantastic monastery. And in general, I would like to thank the whole team of the University of Catania uh, for the organization and for the success of, of being all of us here. For the University of Cantabria, belonging to UNIS was from the very beginning something very important for us. Being a small university in a small town at the north of Spain, this opportunity of merging with other universities from, uh, from our continent was extremely, extremely important. Um, I would like to say that during the, this first phase that you were mentioning, I think that you, we, all of us, under the coordination of Potenan that I want to recognize here, I think that all of us have done well. First, uh, we have to uh, meet and to know each other under circumstances that were not easy at all because of the pandemics. Second, we have been identifying our common interests. We have been establishing interactions. We have been also defining uh, a menu of courses, cultural activities, and so on. And finally, and this is also very important, we have been able to define the legal accommodation of UNIS with the ASBL. So I think that uh, this first phase, uh, I would say that has been quite successful. And now, after the uh, rollout, and having our three new partners at the, at the consortium, I think that we face this second phase that is extremely important first because we have to take this opportunity to define well our offer of training activities, our offer of conjoint uh, studies and degrees. Second, because we have also to make a clear effort to interact and coordinate our activities also in terms of research. But it is extremely important not to forget that the, uh, the main objective of UNIS is to serve our students. We cannot forget that. UNIS is for them. We have to be able to transmit our young people not only a high quality training, but in addition to that, to transmit European values and in addition to that, to transmit all of them how to be really European citizens. We are, I think that all of us here are completely sure that without Europe, there is no solution for the big problems that our world is now facing. So we should be able to transmit our students that, and we should be able also to transmit the pride of feeling of belonging to UNIS, we have been able to transmit that to all our community in our universities, to our faculties. I think that this is a pending issue that we should be able to solve during the next four years, to make possible that all the people working, studying, researching at our universities feel really proud of belonging to this new European university. I'm sure that if we work hardly, we will be able to, to get it. Thank you. And now the uh, University of Mons in, in Belgium, located in uh, Wallonia, the French-speaking region of uh, Belgium, is committed to research of excellence, and it has 10 thematic research institutes and the uh, UMONS Innovation Center. And it is my great pleasure to uh, uh, introduce and call the rector, Philippe Dubois, 
which is also the president of our ASBL. Good morning, everyone. Thanks a lot for the kind introduction words, dear Francesco. Proud, happy, thankful are the three main feelings of me today sharing this time with you. Thankful first for the quality of this organization before and during the meeting. And I would like really to thank deeply all the organizers of your team, Francesco. And I have a very deep thought for Lucia. Thanks, but also proud. Proud of what we have been able to do all together over these three years without forgetting the preparation term, six months, not more. We were in a hurry, if you remember. We were certainly not sure to be successful. And finally, we got it, because we got already in our heart, not only in our mind, but in our heart, the utility of being all together in the frame of this new, as you said, university named UNIS. And as you know me, I like calling it EU NICE. UNIS brings me also happiness. Happiness because we have been able not only to enlarge the consortium to three additional universities, meaning three additional European countries, but also to get our students much more involved in this adventure. We have this student advisory board, and I would like that soon we call it not only advisory, but really participating board, okay? sharing co-sharing, co-building this type of organization all together. Because as you said, Angel, students are our first priority in UNIS. And I can say now, knowing most of you, dear colleagues, rectors, we are sharing the same DNA, building the future through and with our students while keeping in mind the deep, key importance of research. Research for boosting teaching together with our staff members and our students. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And now, Université Polytechnique Haute de France in Valencien. It's the first polytechnic university in France, and uh, it's uh, indeed based on two poles, humanities and uh, science and technology. And here it is uh, represented by its president. It's my pleasure to introduce Akim Artiba. Thank you very much, uh, Francisco. Uh, well, uh, as Philip said, I am proud. I am proud too for uh, different things and uh, subjects. The first thing, uh, we are proud to see the representatives of uh, the city and uh, a colleague of us, that, that, that's uh, really perfect. And the representative of Europe, and we are in a European project. And I will uh, say that uh, we succeeded in a few years, three years, to develop really something very new and important that the states themselves took a lot of time, more than 20 years to develop. And I am really very proud for this unity. I am proud to be here because we are in a historical place, very old university, the oldest one among us, and uh, really very proud to see this organization and I take the opportunity to congratulate uh, your team, Francisco, for this welcome, uh, warm welcome and uh, well organized. And uh, we were all together, we were impressed by the visit we had yesterday to this historical uh, 
place and very ancient and very well uh, kept uh, and uh, belonging to the university. That's really uh, very prestigious. Proud, uh, of course, I am proud for what we did in three years, what our teams and the congratulations go to all of you, the teams of our universities. We developed in three years a lot of things. Uh, excellence programs, uh, thesis portals, uh, connections, internship with industry, uh, mo short mobilities, uh, and a lot of uh, uh, master programs, 20, uh, first uh, 21 programs, I think, uh, and uh, developed with the seven uh, universities, and we hope, of course, and welcome uh, our friends from the uh, three uh, new universities. I am sure we started to have connections in the research. Philippe insisted on the research, of course. Uh, we, <laughs> we depend on the research to develop and continue to develop our, our knowledge. And this transfer knowledge through these new developments is really very appreciated. But uh, I am proud to see that there is an enthusiasm and we have to keep this motivation to continue to develop and to be opened uh, last time uh, and I think we will talk about uh, new uh, developments with other countries even outside Europe. Europe is a very powerful uh, house and we have to open uh, but uh, not to anyone. We have to select. We have to uh, work in, uh, with partners, confident partners. And I insist on these uh, partners that are of interest to all of our universities, uh, not those who want to be one-to-one, -one because we are uh, in a partnership and this partnership should be done with the others. And uh, I am sure with this enthusiasm, with the support of the, these teams, these uh, really dream teams, I am sure that we will continue to develop and to be uh, succeeding our actions. Thank you very much again, Francisco. And now we go to the very north. We go to Vasa in, uh, in Finland. The University of Vasa is one of the largest uh, business universities in, uh, in Finland with interest in economy, technology, communication, management and governance. And it's for me a pleasure to introduce the rector, Minna Martikainen. Thank you. And uh, thank you for uh, University of Cantabria, Rector Angel uh, Passos Carro and your team for organizing this UNIS for us, this team, this meeting. And thank you for all the stakeholders to make our UNIS happen. And thank you for us to make this happen. My message here for you is, what is UNIS? What is UNIS for you? And First of all, think about us in Europe. We make a perfect, nice circle around the Europe. If we visionize our vision, Unis for you, circle around the Europe, targeted for the students with the help of research, I can really see the platform raising the knowledge, science, and teaching to a next level. And I think this is what UNIS for you is, what it should be and what it can be, and what will be with and will. I see when we are in the same room, we have this will to make it happen. So this is what UNIS for you is, to make Europe know-how, knowledge, and research to the next level, supported by us. There is a saying that if there is a will, there is a way. 
And I think that what we are already now, we've shown that there is a way. So we made an impact already. Our Unis for You means, it has to mean, what is the next level? And then we really have to make our circle functioning with the help of students, with the help of science, to make us Unis Europe, and European knowledge to the next level. And I think that this is our responsibility. And I feel, I felt it already, thank you for your visit to the University of Vasa, I already then felt that this team, this group of universities with these faculties and with these students can make it happen. So this is us. This is Eunice for us and for you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your message. And uh, now we go to the three new entries, the three new universities that uh, enter this uh, community. And the first is the University of Peloponnese. And uh, it's uh, a university that is spread across six different cities. There is Tripolis in the center of the Peloponnese and then uh, around Corinth, Kalamata, Naptio, Sparta, and Patras. So uh, it has uh, 25,000 students, nine faculties, and 22 departments. Uh, before introducing the rector, when uh, this university entered, I actually was wondering, we passed from the very north to the very south in the Peloponnese, and then I wondered, is this south as than Sicily? And, uh, and then uh, I've seen uh, 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 Tripolis, and it's like Catania. But Sparta and Kalamata are southern than Catania. <laughs> oh. But then what you do not know is that the Catania University has three branches, Catania, Syracuse, and Ragusa and Ragusa beats Kalamata in Sparta. <laughs> so we are still the Southern University in this community. And it is for me a great pleasure to welcome on the stage the rector of the University of Peloponnese, Athanasios Katsis. Thank you very much, dear rector. Um, dear members of the organizing committee, a wonderful job. As you said, dear Francisco, um, Sicily, especially this part of Sicily and Greece, have historical ties. And uh, as you have noticed, the deputy mayor's last name is Greco. <laughs> so, um, so this is a wonderful opportunity for us. As a new member, I would like to share our first experiences in our university when we introduce Eunice. We introduce Eunice through its first action, which was at the shared courses. Uh, within a few days, we have over 300 applications uh, for our students to participate in approximately 80 slots. Uh, when I asked some of the students what do they expect from them, from these source, uh, courses, they didn't know. They didn't know exactly. But they have this feeling that this was something very good. This is something different. This is something beneficial for them. So our job is to make sure that this is true for them and for all of them. But there is something more to it. Uh, as we all know, uh, you are the more senior members. Um, this is a, a new initiative for EU, this European University Alliance. EU doesn't know exactly what to do with this. This is what the students feel. This is something new, and we have to show them what to do. We have to outpace what the law says. We have to establish our own identity, our own mechanism, and then force, in a good way, to make this into a legislative level. This is the challenge for us to transform 
uh, UNIS into an actual source of knowledge, into an actual source of interaction and producing within UNIS and within our society. So thank you very much. And um, we may think of getting a bit souther to beat you in the South Face. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. And now we move uh, to Portugal, uh, Polytechnic Institute of Viseu in the central part of Portugal. This is uh, certainly the top West university, no doubt. And uh, uh, it offers a wide range of courses. And it is my great pleasure to introduce its president, uh, Jose dos Santos Costa. Cordial saluti, saudações de Portugal, welcome in Portugal. It's an honor to be here today in the General Assembly as a new member of the Ionis family. I want to express my gratitude for the warm welcome, a special salutation to be addressed to the magnificent Rector, Professor Francisco Priolo. Congratulations of the university, the organization. Fantastic. Fantastic days. The assembly, the assembly is not just another event. It's a time to reflect on journal travel. So far, a celebration of new, new alliance and an opportunity to chart an inspiring path for the future. As we come together, I want to emphasize the important F unit and international collaboration. We are not just a collection of individual paving our, our own way. We are a community that succeeds when we work together, when we leverage and collective knowledge and expertise to address the complex problems facing our world. Let's continue to, fo to foster an environment where diversity is celebrated, where ideas are shared, and where everyone feels heard and valued. Together, we can create a space for innovation, knowledge, co-creation, and personal growth. Together, we build the future. I repeat, I repeat the words, Professor Francisco Priolo. The UNIS is for our students. The UNIS, the UNIS is for our university. The UNIS is for our country. The UNIS is for our Europe. The UNIS is for the world. Thank you. And now we go to Sweden, Karlstad University, located in the lake region of Sweden. It has around 20,000 students, and today is represented by its Pro Vice Chancellor, Patrick Larsson. Thank you. Dear friends, <clears throat> First of all, I will take, like to take the opportunity um, to say that uh, our rector, Jeke Morrison, regrets that he is not able to attend here today, and he sends his best regards. At Kosa Uni University, we are very pleased and excited about the granted UNIS for You. It will give us an opportunity to mutually develop, grow, and create an attractive European University Alliance. It has been an intense and exciting year, since we joined the Alliance last summer, we have worked closely together with our nine partners with a new application. And as a new university, uh, and a new UNIS member, sorry, and as a new UNIS member, we also learned a lot about the activities in the current project and gotten to know 
all our partners in order to ensure that Kalsa University contributes and strengthens to the UNIS Alliance. Just like our other uh, UNIS partners, Kalsa University is located in a region that is undergoing major development and where the university plays an important role in tackling the global challenges of our time through collaboration and adapting to the needs of the society. The main local industries in our region consist of paper and pulp production, IT, telecom, steel and, and engineering, together with trade and services and a strong, pu strong public sector. As a member of the Alliance, we will contribute with our associated partners, our education and research. And in return, we expect to receive important input to strengthen the, the education we offer our students, as well as adding value to the public and private sectors in our region. By working closely together with associated partners and organizations in the 10 regions included in the Alliance, we will identify UNIS key competencies and integrate them in our joint academic offer. We have received a warm welcome by the Alliance and <clears throat> Colstay is offering three courses as a start at the, universe, uh, at the UNIS catalog uh, for the spring of 2024. And we also have another 10 subjects where we are adapting courses that can be added as freestanding courses or as contribu contributions within the UNIS excellence programs. We believe that during these four years, we will enrich our educational activities with support from the UNIS Alliance and be able to offer our students a much wider variety of courses and career opportunities. UNIS key competencies will be embedded in our education and en enhance the students' skills and future employability. It also turns out that Kalsa University has already existing contacts in research at several of the universities of the Alliance, including research on solar cells, computer science, service research, which bodes well for the future. The Alliance gives an opportunity to work together in furthering and developing joint educational resources. It will provide a broader range of courses and choices for our students and lead to greater mobility as well as internationalization at home. Collaboration will take place in different uh, constellations. Sometimes the entire consortium is involved and sometimes the collaboration will be bilateral or trilateral. This will um, require hard work and call for adaptation and close collaboration between the partners. Costa University will take every opportunity to ensure good results and that we are looking, and we are looking forward to working together to build a strong, attractive and successful UNIS Alliance. Thank you very much. Thank you, and uh, now, to launch the uh, UNIS uh, video, I'd like to call here our project coordinator, Pavel Zniatala. Okay, thank you very much. I promise to be concise, not to speak too long. I will try. So first of, all, first of all, thank you for the, such a nice uh, uh, place to host us here. Actually, I used uh, many times uh, Catania as an example of uh, uh, how mature Unis is already because we actually benefit from your 600 years history. So I used to tell Unis is almost 600 years old because we, t we, t we took from you all your experience, but only actually few things which I want to address and really stress here. First of all, many, many thanks to our leaders, to our rectors, because at the beginning of the project, now we don't call it any more project, it is like a mission. Uh, at the very beginning, of course, it was a risky thing, especially it was difficult, still it is a challenge to uh, convince our uh, faculty to convince our administration that it will be really a long-lasting project and, and mission, that it's, it's really a good idea to invest effort in it. And I'm really uh, thankful that we have uh, our project officer, uh, Ivona Jabońska, with us. Actually, I don't know, it's not a secret that for the second part of the project, 
uh, she will even uh, be responsible not only for one uh, university, but, but for the bigger group of alliances. So uh, thank you for your support so far. But my point is that uh, thanks to you, our leaders, to rectors, uh, we were able to start the project, and when it was necessary, we could approach you for help. Many times, I know that it's not only me, but another university, we approached you asking for some help, including financial help, because it's another issue that we are not doing it for money. We know that the amount of money which we, we have for it, it's not enough, absolutely not. So all of us, all of university, we add uh, some additional uh, working effort to it, not mention about money. Uh, so thank you for your leadership and we really feel your support. Also based, for example, such a meeting, we see how you organize it. We see that it is important. I remember the others meeting in the previous partners. It was also uh, really, really nice and important. And it is, it is very important for us, for, for all members of the Academia Society, that we know that it is something which, which we have to care and we have to invest for the future. So it is one thing. The second one, uh, especially at the beginning for the, pro for the pilot uh, part of the project, we had to ask really the best people from our universities to run it. And uh, you know that we did it because we really selected all of you. You selected the best people at your university that uh, we were sure it will, it will be a success. So thank you very much. And the third one, of course, it's not maybe now at here to talk about it, but we have absolutely, now we, we can offer more than at the beginning to the students, to our faculty. We, when you visit our website, or even if you look at this brochure, thank you for preparing it, uh, you can see that really our offer uh, in terms of courses uh, to students, also summer schools, you know that we orga as a unit, we organize several of them. And also for, the, for our faculty, uh, we already um, applied, we already submitted some applications for grants together. Together means not necessarily all 10 members, but we already decided that we will, we will organize the uh, research-oriented uh, consortia according to the topic. So absolutely now it's time that we have to activate more, as it was mentioned before here. We should activate more students, we should activate uh, uh, our faculty. In fact, it is already based on questionnaire which was collected that the, the group of uh, our society, academic society, which uh, benefits the most were administration because administration were able to, to learn how even more, you know, how to manage this uh, international cooperation. And now it's time to move it forward. But we created this ecosystem that now it is possible. I think that from the very beginning we couldn't involve students immediately because it was nothing to offer them within the uni's frame. Now we, we can do it. I hope that I was concise. <laughs> Thank you very much. And now enjoy the uh, movie which uh, show you a little bit what was done during these last three years. Of course, more details you can find in, uh, on our website. But also you can simply ask people, hey, what was done in your uh, university uh, in the frame of the unis? And you will see that a lot of things uh, were done. Thank you very much.
told you, you look at this, uh, look at this video and really you won't take part of it and be part of it. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's great. And it is uh, now my great pleasure to call uh, Ivona Jablonska, uh, project manager of UNIS uh, from the European Education and Culture Executive Agency of the European Commission. Thank you. Hello everyone. Wow, it's really a pleasure, honor to be here in this, I'm so happy to be here in this beautiful city, beautiful university, and in front of all the UNIS representatives and all the stakeholders, important stakeholders. So uh, just, I don't know if the presentation will be displayed. And so uh, just to, uh, to let you know, so, so I would like to, um, so my speech will be a little bit uh, supported with a uh, few slides to put the things into, into a context. But I was so stimulated. I, I have been stimulated by your speeches, you know. You were mentioning dreams, uh, evidence generation for policymakers. Uh, benefits for stakeholders, building future together. So all this indeed is uh, a kind of a, of a mission, important mission here, and uh, this enthusiasm is just uh, extremely productive and great. So first of all, I would like to put a little bit the UNIS Alliance into the context of uh, European Universities Initiative. So, so far we, we the Commission has launched uh, four subsect uh, subsequent calls for proposals, 2019-2020, pilot calls for pilot uh, alliances, and then 2020-2023 for, for, the, for the new, in the new framework program, so 2021-27. So currently we have 50 European universities that were selected and are running collectively. And they, th these 50 alliances, they involve more than 400 higher education institutions and a, a number of associated partners and different stakeholders from diverse stakeholders. So what are European universities? Just, just to put a kind of definition here. So, so sorry, just the previous slide. Again. So this is the extract from the call. So there was the European strategy for your, your, uh, universities uh, that was somehow translated. This political dimension and orientation was translated into calls for proposals. And in the call for proposals, you can see that European universities are highly ambitious transnational alliances, not projects, alliances of higher education institutions developing long-term institutional, structural, and strategic cooperation based on common values and agreed principles and aiming to achieve sustainability of their cooperation. The European Universities Initiative responds to a long-term vision that has the potential to transform the institutional cooperation between higher education institutions and bring it, bring it to the next level. So, uh, given that you are operating, you operate in, in a highly complex environment, you act on highly complex processes, uh, there is a need of uh, highest level of commitment, so at the rector level, president level, then mobilizing the critical mass of resources within your universities and, you know, and mobilizing people to co-create, so staff, students, to uh, have a, a kind of uh, other stakeholders are on board to create an ecosystem together, so associated partners, and embrace all the end users. So having staff on board, but also students, because this is also something for them and with them. So uh, given all, all these uh, challenges, there is uh, clearly uh, the, the, this process uh, of removing barriers and transformation is uh, really uh, uh, 
difficult, difficult, and indeed there were uh, poli the policies are are in place, and then you you must uh, via your concrete actions make these uh, policies right, like real, these results real. So just to put a little bit, uh, you, you wanted me to talk a little bit about the future of European Universities Initiative. So let's talk about the, 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 the concrete future first, future of the, of the UNIS Alliance. So first, uh, pilot phase. So we are in the end of this, at the end of this 36 month uh, implementation phase. So the, pro, the alliance, so the first phase will end on the 1st, the 1st of October 2023. Then, just for your information, we will guide you throughout your reporting process because we are expecting your final report to be submitted to the agency in December. And we would like to see what are the results, the concrete achievements, but also what kind of challenges you, you faced. So then, in terms of unis for you, so a kind of, not a continuation, enhancement of what you did before. It is not about catching up what was uh, not possible to do, but it is about enhancement, uh, another level. So you are about signing the grant agreement in October for this new phase with the three new uh, partners. Then uh, you will start this enhanced alliance and enhanced activities uh, on the 1st of November. And we will organize a kickoff meeting in, uh, in January to guide you throughout, uh, throughout uh, you know, the implementation phase, etc. So indeed, let's talk a little bit about the future. And I agree with, uh, with uh, one of the predecessors. Indeed, you build this future because this future is happening now. So uh, indeed, there was a dream, so let's say a dream, but we talk about the policies, the political orientation, uh, which was translated into a call and is translated by you via your description of action, via your grant agreement into concrete commitments and then concrete achievements. So this future is happening now because you contribute, you build this future together. Because what you're doing, you generate evidence, evidence for policy makers on what and how to, to, to approach the future. Uh, because it is about making these universities, European universities, stronger, more competitive, more agile, adapted to the, to the fast moving environment, future and challenges. And then um, you have this responsibility as a role model. So even though we will have 50 or 60 alliances ex running, uh, you, you will transfer or you will impact the higher ecosystem, uh, uh, higher education ecosystem in Europe at large. So it is something that you are now uh, doing together with all the partners, associated partners, with and users on board. This is a, really a radical cooperation where you have these uh, end users that will uptake the results because it is not only about uh, generating results, producing results, but about uptake of these results by the others and using them. So indeed, uh, the future is uh, under discussion uh, in terms of uh, so you are contributing, you contribute to the monitoring framework, to the assessment of the program by the European Commission. Then uh, there are discussion on the investment pathway, there are meetings, you are invited to these meetings to the Commission, you can raise your voice. So what would be the future? What would be the synergies with member states in this new configuration? What would be the synergies between uh, education, research, innovation, and how this will be translated into the service to society. So uh, we are indeed in this co-creation uh, moment. And therefore, uh, please continue, continue to deliver, continue to raise your voice, and continue to, 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 to this, within this with enthusiasm and this, uh, um, like, let's say, uh, uh, cross-fertilization among partners as it is uh, and, uh, and just enhance 
Now, uh, uh, please uh, learn from your lessons, from, from the challenges you faced, and also explain, explain what were the challenges you faced. So thank you very much for your attention. To, to, to thank you, really I'd like to give you a medal of the, and to remember this, a medal of the University of Catania, Sicilia Studium Generale. Thank you. And uh, as, a, uh, as an eternal link among our universities, I'd like to call all the rectors and, uh, and give them also the, the, the medal. Thank you, thank you very much, Francesco. Thank you. Uh, no, thank, thank, you. Th thank you all, thank you all. No, no, remain here, remain on stage. You can open it, so, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Please, all on stage. And uh, yes, with the promise you will not go southern. <laughs> uh, please come, come here. And uh, also, I like to give a medal to Pavel Zniatala, the our project coordinator. So, thank you, thank you all, and I think now it's time for a coffee break. Maybe you take a photo? Yeah, I, I think they, they did it already. Rectors, Eunice colleagues, good morning and welcome to the second session of the day, Activating a European University. I'm Lydia Ceballos Boyden. I'm the leader of the work package of sustainability and impact in Eunice Alliance. Now is the time to learn a little bit about the pillars that sustain Eunice. 
what are we doing in our journey to take higher education to a new era? Of course, this is a huge task and a huge change of concept we are trying to implement here. So three years aren't enough to complete this task. This is only the beginning. But I'm happy, and I think our rectors share this opinion, that we converge and set the foundation for what is to come. Higher education role has changed. We are adapting to keep equipping individuals with the knowledge and skills they need to navigate the complexities of this changing world. We are adapting to contribute in the best way we know to shape the future of our society. Now, some of the members of UNIS will share some good practices, and then we will have some time for questions and a little conversation. In first place, research engineer Hunaida Friha will join us from University Polytechnique Hot de France. She's responsible for coordinating courses and excellent programs. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to me to be with the, in this uh, general assembly with all the circle and all partners. Uh, today, uh, I am so glad to present in behalf to uh, BP2. Okay, uh, BP2 team in at EPHF. We start our presentation entitled co "Sharing and Co-creating Courses Road to Excellence." Thank you. Uh, so, since January 2022, a range of short courses has been offered each semester by the European University units to all students from the seven partners of the Alliance. This course catalog will be consulted on the ENIS website, Course Action, as we see in the slide. Uh, in order to create a course catalog, we start with an internal call for all co for uh, all co-created courses, uh, then we pass to common validation to register the process and learning agreement. Today we have 48 courses already published for three level bachelor, master, and PhD student. Th we have also f many language courses uh, offered to student as well as uh, staff. After collecting of the list courses, we move it to the common validation. Uh, all the info related to this course can be consulted by clicking in the program tab and the land the study guide. Each course is presented according to the same term in GOV to raise the credit uh, CTH for all partner. The majority of courses we delivered into synchronous or asynchronous mode, it's mean online or uh, outline mode in the model. Uh, for the registration procedure has been created and shared by all the partners by UNIS Consulium. It aims to facilitate and uh, co coordinate the joint management of these courses offering by creating a common process. The procedure below the therefore process UPHF management is part of the overall process. Uh, for student in bachelor, master engineering, the first step is checking your eligibility and term of the course timetable, level of study, etc and the study guide available on each UNIS course registration page. The second step for students, contact your education manager to obtain their period agreement and find out about the method of collecting SATS. And the third step for this student, it's applied directly on the web, UNIS website on the Zayed courses page. For PhD student, we have the first step before the course inform your thesis director for your project and ask for their agreement. Second step, apply directly on the UNIS website on the Zared courses page. And finally, once the courses has been validated, the doctoral student must submit a request for validation and send their certificate or su success signed by their thesis director. In each course of listed uh, above the student will receive a response within the day following the course registration. 
did uh, research in the line regarding their acceptance to the ENIS courses. Okay. Uh, the second key for our uh, presentation today is the excellent program. Uh, on May 13, 1st, 2022, the PHF organized two workshop, anti-tide workshop on INIS excellent program and workshop on INIS pedagogical engineering. This workshop gives uh, give rise to 21 excellent program for three level bachelor, master, and PhD in five research teams: smart city, healthcare, transport, transportable mobility environment and suitable environment. Uh, for the excellent program reference and originality for program of excellence can be based on quality of research and reputation of the supporting research laboratory related to the process program. Employability competence forecast in the near future sk means skills need to each territory. And the degree and education customization, student fellow, Pedagogical feature, innovation, monitoring, and or evaluation procedure. The mobility, I means the mobility of all students in the seven all partner, and European identity season to tomorrow. Uh, and we can see all the program uh, prepared by our dear partner. For EPHF, we have two programs, e ET for smart and suitable mobility, uh, leader EPHF and co-coordinator by USA, PUT, and UVA, Another program, bachelor degree in international trade, leader per UPHF and co created by Contabria and Pozna. For UMONS, we have, they proposed three programs. One program master bio, in master bio and third chemistry, uh, and a master in multidisciplinary translation, and finally a crossing border European voyage into intellectual and military uh, co created by UMONS, IPV. Uh, Karlstadt, Cantabria, Catania, and Peloponnese. For Cantabria, they proposed for excellent program a master degree in biomedical engineering and technology, a certificate on global competency. All the people are involved in the, in the creation of this program and a joint doctoral program in One Health, uh, coordinated by IMOS, UPHF, Catania, and uh, Pozna. Uh, for, uh, for the PUT, they proposed three programs, one master in cybersecurity, and one bachelor suitable building engineering, and finally a PhD trend and future prospect in nanomaterial science. We move on to Catania. They proposed a master in, they, they proposed the seven programs. The, the first is in modern philosophy. The second in history of art. Also a master in agroecology. Uh, a bachelor degree in cultural heritage, another bachelor degree in science and language for communication, a ma another master in text science for IET profession, and finally, master in classical physiology. Catania also called for all part partners to collaborate in this program and uh, find coordinator to this uh, seven uh, excellence program. Let's move on to BTU. Our dear German partner, they propose an intelligent microsystem engineering and advanced material with collaboration PUT UPHF, a PhD in sustainable transformation study, and finally a master program technology, environment, science, and society. And we close our excellent program by VASA Master in Integrated Engineer, Engineer Energy System. Thank you for, uh, <laughs> thank you. Now is the turn for Ronnie Snyder, uh, the UNIS project leader in Belgium and advisor for interregional matters uh, for the Rectoral College of University of Mons. Uh, also for Marta Gomez, director for interna internal, sorry, internal, internationalization at home. Uh, at the Vice Rectorate of the Internationalization and Global Engagement at the University of Cantabria in Spain. Please be seated. So, good morning, dear colleagues. Good morning, uh, dear students. Um, maybe a bit of, of context before to start with our 
uh, WIPIs that we have uh, co-lead together with uh, UMONS and University of Cantabria. So I don't... Okay, sorry. So uh, as you know, when the European Commission has uh, started this uh, pilot uh, program, uh, the goal were twofold. Uh, the first one was uh, clearly to improve uh, the uh, quality and uh, the, um, the uh, level of our research and education system in Europe uh, to the benefit of our students. And clearly the second one uh, is, as it has been mentioned by some of our rectors this morning, uh, to build and to promote the uh, Europe European citizenships and uh, to, to build a common set of values that we can share in Europe to the benefit of our society in the near future. This is in this context that this WP3 has been uh, built and uh, at that time uh, when we have started to write the project in a very short period of time, uh, as it has been mentioned, uh, we ask ourselves how to reach uh, this objective, which strategy could we implement uh, to, to promote this uh, European citizenship within our uh, student. So this is the story that we will uh, share with you uh, today, uh, show you how we did it, and uh, explain you what were, what were our success and probably our uh, problems facing uh, during this, uh, this uh, period of time. So I will maybe let Marta explain you uh, the, the way we proceed to do it. Please, Marta. Yeah. So um, since um, our first um, idea was this European citizens, shaping the European citizens, uh, what we thought is, what do our students need to become those European citizens? And everything turned around three main axes. The first one being multilingual. The second one is uh, the um, global competencies, the knowledge on European and global um, issues. And finally, the intercultural competency. So those were the three main axes. And we thought, and we came up with the idea of creating something that would make Unis more unique through our labels, through something that would make us different, and that is the Unis Certificate in Global Competencies. So this is what we're going to be presenting. So the first thing, Ronnie, what did we do regarding languages being multilingual? Yeah, that was indeed the first, uh, the first problem, challenge that we, we faced. And within UNIS, we have decided to create, to co-create, basically, because all universities have participated to this action, uh, 12 uh, language lecture. English lecture, so five intermediate to uh, advanced courses to reach a B2 level in English, which is quite usual, let's say. But we also decided to co-create uh, seven beginner self-study uh, courses in the UNIS local languages namely French, uh, Italian, German, Polish, Swedish, Finnish, and Spanish. Of course, this level will only give an access to a pre-A1 uh, level to the student, but we believe that it was already something very nice for our student to get some knowledge in the UNIS languages in order to travel, in order to exchange with their peer uh, into the project, into the network. So, uh, Maybe it's better to let expert talk about it. So uh, we have a video that should start. Without sound. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean to feel European? It's about bonding and building a community. Two, be humble about your culture. It means being able to put our beliefs, our knowledge, into perspective. Remember, you are absolutely unique, just like everybody else. Number three, share knowledge. The limits of my language mean the limits of my world. Today, there is an urgency to work together, and multilingual teams can help find solutions to problems and issues that impact us all. Four, contribute to building peace. I am Belgian. I speak French. I teach English online, and I live in Portugal. Languages are a powerful tool for social change, and they are key to human intelligence. Have fun. There are 12 UNIS language courses in eight different languages. The choice is yours. So join in the fun. 
So did this action work, basically? Then I have to, some numbers to share uh, with you. Uh, so some uh, numbers uh, that are coming from the first and second edition of our uh, language offer initiative. So uh, in 2022-23, we had almost 1,000 students that have uh, registered to the language uh, courses, uh, and almost the same number uh, for the, this year. Uh, 40 teachers were uh, involved, and when, you, when we had this satisfaction survey to the student, we got a mark of four over five. So uh, I think that uh, we can consider that this pilot phase, it's still a pilot phase, uh, in terms of uh, language offer, has been a, a success uh, story through uh, uni. So that was the, the first action that we uh, really developed in terms of developing this uh, European uh, citizenship. This is not the only one, as, you, as Ma, uh, Marta explained you. So the second one is related to the uh, development of the global competencies, and I will let the expert talk about it. <laughs> well, in fact, uh, we are going to let um, an expert explain what it is, you know, uh, being global. So there is a video that is self-explanatory. Or not. Is it not now? Well, um, yeah, well, we've got uh, the thing is with this knowledge on European and global issues, we decided, uh, according to the expert's opinion, to organize this around three different. Oh, is it working now? No? Okay. No, it's fine. So we decided to organize it around three different actions. Everything around courses and helping our students achieve that European or global uh, knowledge. The first option, the first action is this. Uh, some online courses within the VP2 offer of online courses. There were several ones, in fact seven, that were related to this European and global knowledge. And again, we're gonna let a student um, I speak about it. There is another video. Hopefully it works. They worked. <laughs> well, there is um, a student sharing his experience on, um, on taking this course, these online courses with the students from all the Alliance and being able to share not only the content on the, of the courses, but again, the, their own experience from their own societies and countries. So it's a pity because this presentation was full of videos sharing the experiences. Uh, it's not the same when I am the one sharing the experiences, but anyway, we'll make it work. Yep. Yeah. So the second action, is the pointer not working? There it goes. The second action was making this knowledge on European global issues even more inclusive, which is um, that anybody from anywhere could take the course for free so we co-created, and this is the first 100% um, co-created course, um, this massive online open course that was offered uh, last um, academic year, and it's gonna be offered in 23, 24, again, during the second semester. So here, we joined forces with academics. Uh, so in fact, it was 15 teachers creating the different modules, uh, and then we had 500 uh, inscriptions, it was, um, like I said, open to the whole society, everywhere, inside unis and outside unis. So um, there were 90% of those uh, subscriptions were from unis uh, students and also staff. And the, um, I would like to bring here the overall satisfaction rate that we obtained with this MOOC. There was a, like a real true experience of co-creating, of working together, and then again sharing with the community. And the third action is not as inclusive as this one, but it's been very successful. And it is uh, the blended intensive program, according to the Erasmus uh, programs, uh, Introduction to Global Studies. At the University of Cantabria, we had been organizing this course, Introduction to Global Studies, for several years. So we decided to share it and offer it and open it to the UNIS community. So uh, we invited different professors from all the different universities to come to Santander for two weeks during the month of July 
uh, and also students from uh, the uni's universities. Um, we've had two editions. We're going to have another one next year. And it's um, this summer, we had 22 UNIS students. We had um, 24 from the University of Cantabria and two from the University of North Carolina in Charlotte, which is a partner that we've been working with at the University of Cantabria for years. And then again, uh, teachers were not only from the University of Cantabria, but also from the UNIS partners and from the University of North Carolina. And there is another video that I hope it works of students and teachers sharing their experience in Santander. M maybe you could try to s go out of the slideshow. Yeah, okay, okay, thank you. This BIP um, was the first UNIS summer school that we started this year as a pilot in Santander. So once we have covered this knowledge on European and global issues, uh, the final um, item that I mentioned at the beginning was this intercultural competency. So Ronnie, how can we, or how have we helped our students with that intercultural uh, competency? Thanks. So indeed, uh, the third pillar of our doesn't. <laughs> we love technology. See. <laughs> yeah, we, we, face, we face some technical problem in Unis, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so the third pillar of our um, uh, action was related indeed to nurture the inter intercultural proficiency of the students, which is not an easy task, of course. That's why we decided to basically establish a portfolio of, uh, of action that have been basically summarized into a, a, big, uh, a big event that we... Could you... that we called uh, Unis Weeks. Okay. So, uh, basically the Unis Weeks are a, a multicultural and intellectual festival which aim to promote European values and uh, highlight the diversity of Unis uh, region in alignment with our vision, the Unis vision of a multilingual and inclusive Europe. So, uh, this is, for example, the, um, the advertisement for the next one, the one that will be uh, organized uh, very soon, uh, in October, November uh, 23. And you can see that basically this, uh, this unique suite contain a lot of uh, activities from conference, conferences from uh, cultural events like concert or virtual uh, visit of museum, but also some face-to-face -face, uh, activities. Uh, as an example, a, a very good example are the UNIST games, uh, in which we have uh, students from the entire network uh, going to Poznan this year uh, to have a, a volley uh, tournament uh, in Poznan and sharing and uh, exchanging on their, uh, on their experience. So this is uh, what we have implemented uh, during the two first uh, year uh, of uh, the UNIS uh, project at that time. And uh, to give you a number, basically we got uh, almost 2,000 uh, registration for the first uh, editions. So we still have a, a video here, but I guess it will not... It's working ah, now. It's working yeah. now? Okay. Please go ahead then. So this is a cultural event that happened at University of Mons in the context of the Unis Weeks. It was a concert from the Orchestre Royal de Chambre de Wallonie. Transition. <laughs> <laughs> So this was the first tournament vole volleyball tournament in Poznan. So see, it's quite uh, different activities, but all of them contribute to the same objective, huh? uh, to nurture this intercultural uh, facets of the students. So. 
so the question is, and we arrive at the end of the, of the presentation, we, we, we show you, uh, at least we try to show you, uh, the, the activities we have developed within this work package. The question is, now, did we succeed? Did we reach our uh, objective? And to conclude, I would let the word to, Ma to Martha, please. Okay, so did we rise up for the challenge? Like I said at the beginning, we put together all these different branches in a certificate, something that would make UNIS more unique. And that is the Certificate in Global Competences that un the University of Cantabria will start issuing this uh, academic year, 23-24. And um, I would like to thank everybody at the University of Cantabria, to, you know, everyone who helped us to put this together and get it running. Um, so the idea is for all the different partners to start issuing this uh, uni certificate. It is a supplement to the European diploma that students will get once they finish their undergrad, this, their, their degree. So um, unis for you uh, will continue to develop these key uh, transversal skills, these key competences and these global uh, competences that shape our students and our communities as European citizens. So I've been told that videos are working now. There was an internet connection, that, that was the uh, problem. So if you allow us, I would like to share the video with the uh, blended intensive program because it's students sharing their experience and you will able to see and to have a glimpse of what we do in the mornings and also of the activities that we do in the afternoons. That the month of July in Santander is very pleasant. So if you will please, I can turn to the uh, slide. Okay. This is it. This is the video. Also, Tomatina. So, uh, I involved in this course. The course on global studies uh, has been offered at the University of Cantabria to uh, students from UNIS universities. So the cultural element becomes really important. There are students from different countries working and living together. They have been living with families here in Santander. Discovering a new culture, uh, meet people from all over Europe, all over the world. To know the culture better, to know how the way of life is in Spain. They have dinner pretty late, so like it's around 10, 10, 30, but, but I was actually aware of that. And uh, also that uh, having like the conversations with the host family, I came to know about San Fermin and people running after the bulls and also Tomatina. So uh, I enrolled in these courses because um, I'm actually an assistant teacher in the University of Mons. And so I thought courses related to globalization and to global studies would be interesting to try and find a way to implement the elements learned during those courses. I believe the thing that has impacted me the most about this course was the interrelationship we could see between the different topics and different concepts. It has not only been an international course, but a multidisciplinary course. The teachers have been able to find a relationship and show it to us, which I believe is essential in a globalized world. All professors have different backgrounds, and that's why I think very interesting. We talk about science, economics, or literature, and I didn't expect that. I would recommend this experience. I think uh, it really broadens your perspective. This is it for VP3. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Martha and Rooney. Uh, for the third topic of the day, we have Cristina Satriano, UNIS project leader at the University of Catania, our host here in Italy. Thank you for that. Uh, she's in charge also of the work package that aims to reduce, uh, sorry, reinforce the university business and society connection. Um, Patrick Hoffmann, he's here at the Brandenburg University of Technology in Germany. Thank you. Uh, we only have one video, hope it's gonna work. <laughs> Yeah, the first video is always working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this uh, activity, uh, as uh, Lydia mentioned, is the one within UNIS that uh, 
has the aim to make ties between the university and the society and the business world. We made a joke with the USBC, the university, society, and business connection. So uh, this uh, work package has been uh, carried out <laughs> together by University of Catania, mostly as a leader, and uh, University of Brandenburg as a co-leader. So I give the floor to Patrick to explain what kind of needs we were aimed to cover in this uh, activity. Um, yeah, for USBC, <laughs> uh, University Society and Business Connections, what, what do we need? Well, we identified, uh, so to say, two, two columns. Uh, the first one is a knowledge transfer, and, and the second one is entrepreneurial uh, education. Um, and for the knowledge transfer, we, of course, have to, have to improve and, and to support this uh, triangle uh, of, uh, between education, uh, innovation and re research and innovation in that direction, and valorization of the results. So that's the first uh, column. And on the other side, entrepreneurial education, uh, we have um, uh, established an, uh, in, 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 in portal for um, uh, inter internships. And uh, on the other side, we need uh, um, uh, education, um, industrial-driven education. And, and for industrial-driven education, you need, uh, all, this consists of, of, of mainly uh, three, three parts, what is, uh, do the education programs, what is a co-design of curricula, and a lifelong learning program, of course. Um, yeah, and uh, what uh, accomplishments uh, we, we, we reached? Yeah, we are quite proud. I would say that uh, we got uh, some of uh, we, uh, some of good results, we hope, uh, uh, building an international internship portal, which is uh, uh, working with more than 200 companies and uh, research institutes uh, offering a possibility of internships so to the UNIS. Uh, and we will say also, also to associate the UNIS students, not strictly UNIS students. And uh, we have run industrial workshop. The very first was uh, unfortunately during the COVID, so it was run online. And we had, uh, in that case, at that time, the companies elevator pitch. And then the year later, in Catania, we had the industrial PhD workshops. And then uh, we made the other way around, doing the PhD student elevator pitch, just a, a, a contest, a few minutes to explain the research topic. And that workshops were mostly focused also on two uh, te research teams uh, that were identified, the uh, materials and energy topics. Also, another activity that uh, we developed is the so-called joint open lab. That means uh, we made the uh, recognition of all the equipment and facilities that we share, that we open to third parties. And uh, this will continue also in the, you will heard more tomorrow in the new uh, in the continuation of UNIS with the joint open lab phase two and uh, the contamination lab and uh, uh, innovation, imagine innovation cap that were two contests. Uh, we are gonna talk a little bit more in detail in the next slide. So maybe I can, so we can switch to the next to start to discuss in detail some of these activities. Please, right, and, and one key action, of course, was this uh, internal internship, uh, international internship portal. It's not only for, for internship, it's also for, for, for thesis. And you see here, uh, we have integrated this in UNI's homepage, uh, this, this portal. Uh, you have a, a mask, a form to fill in and to search for, uh, for, uh, for, for internships. Uh, so for the students, uh, they can search for internships and for, for also for... Uh, for, for, for topics, um, uh, for, for thesis, exactly. Um, and uh, of course, uh, the question here is also, is it working? Of course, we have uh, some, some issues to tackle, but uh, we, we made some testimonials. There's one, uh, so to say, as an as a interview made testimonial, also on our homepage, that is to be seen here. And we brought also an, uh, a video a testimonial from, from uh, a student what uh, what what uh, used our, our portal 
and uh, that is the right hand side. Good morning, my name is Davide Russo. I'm a 22 years old student of the University of Catania. During the summer, I could use the help of UNIS in order to spent two months abroad studying at the University of Mons. During this time, I couldn't understand what it really looks like to be studying abroad and to be communicating with people from other countries. I find out that so many industries in all the Europe are available within the UNIS network and that it is possible so to understand in another way, with another approach, what it really looks like to be using your knowledge in order to give your contribution in the world by working and by improving the technology. During the period in months, I could find out that it was so easy to find new friends. I was spending my free time with people coming from all the Europe and not only, also with people coming from Asia, like an Indian guy which was working with me at the at Materia Nova. I suggest everyone to give a look at the UNIS internship portal and to try this type of experience because not only you will manage to understand how it looks like to stay abroad and to communicate with people coming from other contexts, but also it will help you to understand what it will be your future after you finish your studies. Yeah. That was the example for our Key Action 1, so the, the, the International Internship Portal, but we also had the Key Action 2. Yeah, if I may just you go back just uh, to the previous one to explain better what I was saying before. Lily Carpentier, the other testimonial. I don't know if the link is working. There should be an Apple link to click on the l right on the yeah. She's a, she w uh, was a student doing an Erasmus uh, uh, mobility at Poznan University, and during that time she used the portal for coming. Uh, I think in yes. In, uh, in Catania, it's not. Uh, Maybe it's not working in presentation mode, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, it doesn't matter, but that is one of the example are, as to say. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of a block, yeah. I think you need scroll to scroll down. down. So we have on the UNIS website all this section of testimonials for the students that took part to this. Uh, uh, UNIS driven <laughs> internships uh, somehow and uh, yeah this was an example and uh, now uh, we can go to the next section yep. thank you key action two that we want to talk to you today to next Okay, is about the uh, fostering the entrepreneurship thinking. So uh, we did that mainly to, through two actions. One is uh, what is called the UNIS Contamination Lab. We are aware that uh, as Italian contamination uh, uh, is quite understandable since this is a, uh, a pro national project from uh, Italian Ministry of University of Research that was uh, launched some years ago. Catania was part of this project, and uh, the idea is to uh, contaminate the different fields, different backgrounds, uh, uh, different sectors uh, to uh, help students to sit together at the table to have a virtual lab, physical lab, discuss an idea, and to get more and more uh, acquainted to the how to progress to develop a business idea and uh, uh, somehow with our colleagues it was, we, were, we were asked how, why we need to use contamination because usually contamination seems not a positive meaning but uh, we want to keep this uh, libel for the lab to stress uh, what really the crossing of different the cross disciplinarity how important is this action and uh, this UNIS contamination lab was la run during the last year of UNIS, so this year, and it was uh, um, structured with the online workshops at the different places, and we had the final uh, summer school in Catania last July. And uh, the UNIS Con Imagine Innovation Cup has been another activity that we have been working a lot on that, 
And also in that case, we have really seen how we have grown together because there was a discussion at the beginning, what kind of contest to organize at the different university, because we said we will have a local phase and then a final phase with the contest in Catania. That has been, by the way, the same last month in July. We have been quite busy in the last month, in the last month here with the summer school, with the, the final contest. And some university organized the, for the first time that kind of contest with the start cap uh, um, format. And uh, we, had, uh, we had a winner that was uh, a team from Spain with the, with the project uh, Sense, I think, was related to sensing. And, uh, yeah, and uh, our final slide, uh, of course, lessons learned. What are the next steps? Well, uh, a portal of internship, of course, that was expected. Uh, there is uh, always, you have always issues or di language difficulties as you are dealing with the uh, companies. Uh, but I, at least in Germany, I, I feel that there's also a change so that uh, foreign languages are more accepted uh, in, in, in the labor market. Uh, and I think we, we can foster this with our uh, internship uh, portal. Uh, and of course, another um, um, uh, uh, point was that we were heavily affected by the COVID pandemic uh, because, uh, I mean, this is uh, these are hands-on experience. You have to have mobility to go somewhere for an internship. Uh, you have to be uh, exposed to this different environment. And that, of course, was in the beginning uh, not possible. But I think uh, now we have uh, good conditions to use it in, in uh, a world with COVID, but uh, the old world with COVID. Yes, for the last part, uh, for this that uh, entrepreneurial education uh, issue target, what we learn is that it's a concept that it is uh, very intuitive. Even uh, if we are talking about science or um, uh, humanity, the different fields sometimes happens that. Uh, we are all taught in different languages, so this uh, multi uh, and interdisciplinary concept, it's a really, really crucial. So to have a seed of knowledge, to be grown and grown, and uh, especially when we want to establish this connection with society, connection with ecosystems and uh, with the business world and companies. And uh, I think that's all for our work package. Yeah, thank you for your Thank attention. you. Thank you for your